So what I'd like to talk about today is the relationship between autism spectrum disorders, or ASD, and intellectual and developmental disability syndromes. So autism spectrum disorder uh, results from the action of many risk factors, genetic and environmental. However, uh, ASD often occurs in association with various intellectual and developmental disability syndromes. Uh, and I'm going to focus particularly on Fragile X syndrome, which is the leading inherited cause of intellectual disability. Uh, about 60% of individuals with uh, Fragile X syndrome al also meet criteria for uh, an ASD. Now, just to put that in perspective, that only accounts for about 2 to 5% of cases of, of autism. So what, what people have begun to claim is that Fragile X syndrome and other IDD syndromes uh, may help us have a window onto this more complex multifactorial non-syndromic uh, autism. In the case of Fragile X syndrome, we know the gene that causes Fragile X syndrome. We know a lot of its protein products, and so therefore, since it's simpler in some sense etiologically, then uh, we can study Fragile X syndrome and learn about the causes of uh, autism in non-syndromic cases. Another claim is that treatments that work for Fragile X syndrome or other IDD syndromes will also work for autism because of this shared symptom, uh, this symptom overlap. Um, and in uh, the case of Fragile X syndrome, there are now a lot of drugs being tried, and a lot of the, the claims are that drugs that work for Fragile X syndrome will essentially have exactly the same effects in autism spectrum disorder. And so both of those claims really uh, depend on the following assumption. Uh, ASD reflects the same underlying psychological and neurobiological problem in the non-syndromic case as in the syndromic intellectual developmental disabilities uh, case. So uh, if we make it a little more specific to Fragile X syndrome, uh, ASD is the same whether it occurs alone or in association with Fragile X syndrome. And so what I'd like to address in the next few minutes is whether this assumption is correct. And we've done some research in my lab uh, which suggests that, in fact, the assumption may not be correct, at least not for Fragile X syndrome. Uh, one study that we recently published, this was a study led by uh, Andrea McDuffie, uh, the, what we found was that the ASD symptom profiles differ between individuals with Fragile X syndrome who also have a comorbid diagnosis of autism and individuals with non-syndromic uh, ASD. Uh, and in particular, what we found was even though they, the, both of these groups of individuals met criteria for autism spectrum disorder, we saw more social smiling in the case of individuals with Fragile X syndrome, a greater range of facial expressions used for communication, more offering to share, more conventional use of gestures, and fewer uh, unusual preoccupations and, com and compulsions and rituals. At the same time, however, we saw more complex behavioral mannerisms in people with Fragile X syndrome who had the comorbid autism diagnosis, uh, and also more circumscribed interests. And so even though both of these groups of individuals had the same diagnosis, they had very different symptom profiles. In another study that was led by Dr. Uh, Dr. Angela Thurman in our lab, uh, we looked at the correlates of autism in these two groups of individuals, people with Fragile X syndrome and comorbid ASD, and individuals with non-syndromic ASD. And what we found wa uh, was, I think, some important differences. In particular, anxiety was rated as higher in individuals with uh, Fragile X and comorbid autism than in individuals with non-syndromic autism. And uh, importantly, anxiety was highly, highly correlated with social avoidance in individuals with Fragile X syndrome and comorbid ASD, but not in individuals with non-syndromic ASD. And we think about social avoidance as being a really core feature of autism, and yet we see really different correlates in these two groups. And in the final study, which was also led by Dr. Uh, Andrea McDuffie, uh, we found uh, differences. Uh, this time we only looked at individuals with Fragile X syndrome, and we made comparisons between individuals with Fragile X who met criteria for autism and those who did not, and we looked at their symptom profiles. And what was interesting is when we compared these two groups of, fr of Fragile X individuals, we saw no differences between them in uh, social skills, in the particular the domain of reciprocal social interaction, which is one of the key domains of, that defines autism. Uh, we did see differences in communication between these two groups and, and very large differences in repetitive and restricted interests. And this was true whether we looked at childhood or adolescence. So it really is puzzling that the difference between these individuals with fragile X who do and do not meet criteria for autism is really not social in nature, which really seems to get at the heart of of aut what autism is. So just to summarize then, what we have found in our research, and others are, are finding the same thing when it comes to Fragile X at least, um, ASD may not reflect the same underlying psychological and neurobiological problem in the non-syndromic case uh, 
as uh, in the comorbid IDD syndrome case. Now, this does not mean that Fragile X syndrome or other IDD uh, conditions are not useful for understanding non-syndromic um, autism and autism spectrum disorder, but it really means it's a far more complicated picture than we really appreciate it. And so there's not a simple window from Fragile X, for example, onto uh, non-syndromic autism. And then I think most importantly, what our research is suggest suggesting is that treatments may not transfer directly between Fragile X syndrome or any other IDD syndrome and non-syndromic autism. And so I think the bottom line is, is that I think we've been, as a field, we've been very um, complacent with stopping with just prevalence estimates, knowing what the, the comorbidity between autism and fragile X or the comorbidity between autism and Down syndrome is. And I think that that's really, uh, in many respects, that's just the starting point. We really need a lot more research that's focused on trying to understand what that comorbidity means. And it may mean very different things in very different conditions, and that may have different implications for what we learn about autism, what we learn about uh, IDD, and it also will have important implications for treatment.